Hi, my name is Lena Krockenberger. I'm a second year graduate student in the bioinformatics program here at UCLA. And today I'll be talking about a method we've developed for trans-EQTL mapping in multi-context studies. So it is known that most variants that are associated with diseases are located in non-coding regions of the genome. And this leads to the natural hypothesis that their effect on disease is mediated through gene expression regulation. EQTL mapping is a tool to identify relationships between these regulatory SNPs and uh, gene expression, where cis EQTLs are SNPs that regulate the expression of nearby or cis genes, and trans EQTLs are SNPs that regulate the expression of distal genes or genes on different chromosomes. And this can either be directly or through an intermediary factor where the SNP first regulates the expression of the cis gene, which then in turn regulates the expression of the trans gene. So for both computational and statistical reasons, efforts to date have focused more on mapping cis genetic effects on gene expression, despite the fact that trans effects explain more than twice the variability in gene expression than cis effects. So it's been shown that cis effects explain between 5 to 10% of gene expression heritability, while trans effects explain between 20 and 25% of gene expression heritability. In addition, complex trait heritability that's due to cis genetic mediated effects is estimated to be around 10 to 11%, while in comparison, trans effects drive between 70 to nearly 100% of complex trait heritability. So therefore, detecting and understanding these transgenetic effects is a key step towards a more complete understanding of complex trait genetics. However, robust discovery of trans EQTLs is quite challenging for a couple of reasons. The first being that trans effects are typically much weaker than cis effects, and therefore they're much harder to detect. Uh, trans effects are also shown to be more context specific, or it's been shown in GTEx that a gene's uh, top trans EQTL is usually specific to a single tissue. Second, current methods of trans EQTL mapping test for association between each SNP and each trans gene, which results in an enormous multiple testing burden and requires a significant threshold correction for over a billion tests. And third, issues with aligning sequencing data, such as multi-mapped reads and reads from repetitive regions, lead to up to 75% uh, false trans signals. So here we see a region of gene A and a region of gene B that are identical. So that so reads that actually come from gene A can also align to gene B. And a variant that has an association with the expression of gene A can also be falsely associated with the expression of gene B, which leads to a false positive trans EQTL signal. So to address some of these challenges, we've previously developed a gene-based association test called GBAT that's designed to detect trans effects. And instead of testing for association between all SNP and trans gene pairs, GBAT first builds cis genetic predictors of expression and then subsequently tests for association between all predictors of expression and trans gene pairs. So this reduces the number of tests by at least two orders of magnitude and substantially improves the power to detect transgenetic effects that act through cis effects on a gene. GBAT's also uh, designed to account for multi-map reads to reduce false positives. However, this method was developed to estimate trans effects um, in a context-by-context -context basis and doesn't take advantage of the sharing of EQTLs across tissues. So the main challenge when working with multi-context gene expression data is that to reduce both cost and experimental heterogeneity, these studies usually employ repeated sampling. And this is apparent in both the GTEx and CLUES data sets, where the same individual contributes multiple different tissue, tissue samples or cell types. So when you use a linear model to associate genetic effects to expression, this repeated sampling structure is captured by the residual error term, which causes correlation across the residuals um, between the context. And most, most methods of cross-context EQTL mapping assume independent, identically distributed residuals. So unaccounting for this intra-individual residual correlation can 
both reduce, uh, induce false positives and reduce the power to identify EQTLs. So this is why we've developed CSTEM, which is specifically designed to account for intra-individual correlation that results from multi-context studies. So CSTEM first decomposes expression into a shared component and a specific component, where the shared component is computed as an average gene expression term across contexts and is therefore consistent across contexts. And the specific term is computed as the difference between the observed expression and the shared component and is therefore specific to each context. And then like GBAT, CSTEM then builds cross-validated cisgenetic predictors of expression using regularized regression uh, for both the shared and the specific components of expression. And these are then combined to build a total predicted component of expression per gene per context. And then this total predicted component is then tested for association between all transgenes in each context. And we employ a hierarchical false discovery correction scheme that controls for multiple testing at each level. So with our method, we're able to build a more accurate predictor of expression and we successfully combine information across multiple different contexts. So to evaluate this method, we use simulation studies where our simulated data is based on the model that I mentioned a few slides ago, where SNPs regulate the expression of a cis gene, which then regulates the expression of a trans gene. We refer to the cis gene here as the regulator and trans genes as E genes. And we first simulate genotypes from a binomial distribution with a minor allele frequency set to 0.2 per SNP. The simulated expression of the regulator is based on this linear model that simulates both shared and specific causal effects from genotypes and effect sizes are drawn from a normal distribution that's based on the total cis heritability. Um, we simulate the residual using a multivariate normal distribution that's based, uh, that includes correlation across contexts. Uh, the simulated expression of the trans gene is based on this linear model, which simulates a causal effect from the simulated cis expression, and the effect size is calculated using the variance explained by the simulated cis expression. We then applied our method to the simulated data, and in the interest of time, uh, we only show comparisons between CSTEM and GBAT since GBAT has previously been evaluated against SNP-based and other gene-based methods. And we find that both methods control the type 1 error rate at around 5%, but CSTEM increases power over GBAT. We also applied CSTEM to the data from the GTEx consortium, which includes bulk RNA-seq data from 49 different human tissues, to map trans EQTLs across these tissues. We identified a total of 141 unique trans E genes and characterized the sharing and specificity of these effects across tissues. We found that most of these trans EQTLs are specific to a single tissue, with tissues like skin and muscle having the highest number of tissue-specific associations. We also see 28% of trans EQTLs that are shared between more than six different tissues. So to quantify the impact of adjusting for repeated sampling in real data, we compared the performance of CSTEM to that of GPAT, G, GBAT and GTEx, and we found that while CSTEM identifies the majority of pairs identified by GBAT, it also finds a 65% increase in associations. So this increase comes both, both from the fact that we find more regulators per tissue, but also more targets per regulator, which gives a better idea of the transregulatory networks. So we see that the power to detect trans EQTLs per tissue in both GBAT and CSTEM is highly dependent on the sample size in each tissue. However, with our improved predictor of expression, we're able to increase the power to detect E genes even in tissues with smaller sample sizes. I also mentioned previously that trans effects are shown to be more context specific than cis effects. Uh, but by not accounting for the intra-individual correlation in multi-context studies, we observe that GBAT overestimates the tissue specificity of trans effects. 
An interesting result that we found in GTEx was this regulatory pair between IRF1 and PARP10 that's specific to skeletal muscle. IRF1 is a known transcription factor that facilitates the regulation of the interferon immune response. And previous studies in GTEx have identified cis regulatory loci that regulate the expression of IRF1 and are also associated with diseases such as muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis. So as a result, this regulatory association might have some implications of complex traits in skeletal muscle. So here we present CSTEM, which is a method we've developed for gene-based trans-EQTL mapping that's specifically designed to account for intra-individual correlation that's commonly seen in multi-context studies. In simulations, we show that CSTEM is more powerful than existing methods of gene-based association testing, and we show an increase in the number of e-genes found in GTEx across tissues. Our results in GTEx also validate previously found association pairs that have been reported in GTEx. And with that, I'd like to thank my lab, my advisor, Dr. Bruno Ballew, our collaborators from the University of Chicago, Dr. Mike Thompson, as well as our funding sources. Thank you, and I'm happy to take questions. So, uh, so you showed like the way it works is uh, the snippet acting the, the gene and the gene is going and the cis gene and the cis gene is affecting the trans gene. Right. Does it always have to happen that way? Then the cis can can the snip directly uh, you know affect the expression of the gene. Yeah. The yes. So the mechanism can be both ways. It can the snip can directly regulate the expression of the trans gene. But um, papers have shown that this mechanism is supported, and so um, this is the mechanism that we, we look for in our model. Hello, thank you so much for the nice presentation. I was wondering if you have had the chance to look at sex differences. So we know that the, we know that with the CIS QTL, there were they have observed sex difference in uh, the immune system and other tissues that it was not expected. And I was wondering if you have had the chance to look at it and whether we do see the same in the trans uh, EQTL. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So we haven't specifically looked at that. Um, however, there are sex specific tissues such as testes. And so we've found an increase in the number of trans EQTLs found within that tissue specifically. Um, but as for looking at like sex differences through the genetic regulatory mechanisms, we haven't exactly looked at that. Yet, that that's a great call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Just a clarification question. So uh, in GBAT and in C-STEM, well, in GBAT, for each gene's expression, the possible predictors are every other genes predicted expression in every tissue. So right. it's number of genes times number of tissues. Right, so Isn't we model it? each gene in independently. Right, right. And so the number tissue. of predictors then would be the predicted expression of each of the other genes in each of the, uh, in every tissue. Or is it in the same tissue? Uh, you mean in, in the second step where we look at the association between the cis gene and the trans gene? In GBAT, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. Yeah, exactly. In the second step. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking at the association between every gene in one tissue and every trans gene to that gene in the same tissue. In the same tissue. Yeah, okay. in the same tissue. Okay. Yeah, we have not looked at cross tissue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so the and the other clarification, the only difference between conceptual difference between C, GBAT and CSTEM is that the, cor the correlations among the covariates are accounted for right. through that first step. Right, yeah, so GVAT assumes each tissue is independent. Right, right. And so, yeah, so when you have repeated sampling, that's not accounted for. But the multiple hypothesis testing burden is similar in both. Uh, yes, okay. yeah, it's similar.